Hi there and welcome into this tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to create a companion, but this is actually going to be split between two videos. And in this first video, I'm going to be setting things up for our companion. In order to create our companion, the first thing that we need to do is to actually create the companion itself. For that, let's go to our content drawer. And this time it's going to be uh, quite a lot of files. So to keep everything organized, I'm going to be creating a new folder. So just right click and then select new folder. This one is going to be for our companion. Now open this up and right click, select blueprint class, then select a character and this is going to be our dp underscore companion. Like that. Uh, open this pp companion, place it up here. And you're going to notice that we don't have anything yet, so I'm going to be adding that now. Select the mesh, and then go to skeletal mesh. And with this select, you should be seeing this over here, skeletal mesh asset. Open this up, select this one. Uh, I'm using the third person template, so there is nothing yet, but there is a template for the third person character. So I'm going to be using the SKM Kim. This one over here. Just select it and then place it to match our collision like that. Rotate it to face the arrow like so, and should be good. Just compile it, save it, and that's be good. That's good enough for now for our VP companion. But there are a lot of files that you need to create, and that's mainly what I'm going to be doing now. Uh, so the next thing that I want to be doing is to create the controller for this companion. That's mainly what's going to be detecting uh, the control of this companion. So right click and then let's go into blueprint class. You're going to notice that there is a player controller. I'm not going to be using this one. So to select the controller that I'm going to be using, you need to expand this our classes. Then just search for AI controller. And you should be seeing this over here, AI controller. Just select that one, hit select. And this one is going to be our companion underscore controller. Now, there are a few other files that I need to do as well. The next one is for his behavior. So to do that, I'm going to artificial intelligence and I'm going to be selecting behavior tree. So this one is going to be our companion underscore behavior. Open this behavior tree and I'm going ahead and I'm going to be creating the blackboard as well. So just hit and create a new blackboard. So this one's going to be our BP underscore companion. Like that. And save everything. Just save everything. Save all. Now I'm going to open our companion controller. Open our companion controller. Then go to event grab. You're going to notice this event over here, event begin play. I am going to get from this event begin play, I'm going to get run behavior three. And then I'm going to be selecting the behavior tree that we have just created. Place it here and that should be good. Compile it, save it. And now I'm going into our BP companion and I need to connect the controller to our BP companion. So for that, I am going to class defaults and I'm going to be searching for controller. And I'm going to be selecting the controller that I have just created. That's going to be companion controller. I'm also going to be creating an animation blueprint for this companion. So let's go ahead and re right click, then go into animation, should be over here. Then select animation blueprint. I'm going to be selecting the SK mannequin, but if you're using a different one, just select the one that you're going to be using for this companion, then hit create. And this one is going to be our anim. Uh, sorry about that, let's just rename this. This one is going to be our anim underscore companion, like that. Now I'm going to be placing this anim companion inside our companion as well. So just delete this. You're going to notice right here anim class. Right now there is none. That's why it's not playing any animation at all. So I'm going to be selecting the anim companion that we have just created like that. Compile it, save it, and that's good for now. Uh, you don't need to worry about the behavior tree because it's uh, since I have connected the controller to our VP companion, it's connected the behavior tree here as well. So 
Next thing, I think I'm going to be doing the animations for our character so for this companion. So I'm going ahead with that. Uh, this is the animation blueprint. What I'm going to be using here is actually I'm going to be getting a state machine. So just right click and then get state machine. Should be this one over here. And I'm going to be naming it. So this is for the basic functions. Things like let's say the animation for idle, walking and things like that. So I think I'm going to be, I'm going to just be getting this as the default animation. I'm going to also go ahead and I'm going to get a slot. That's going to be a slot, default slot, so that is a little bit easier to play in montages inside the BP Companion itself. So just get this pin shown from our default to our slot, default slot, and then to our output pose. Then once you hit compile, you should be seeing this over here this race, there's going to be a few warnings, that's mainly because even though we have created a state machine, we don't have anything there yet. So let me do that now. To do that, just double click this state machine. Then here I have only the entry, I'm going to right click and add a state. The first state is going to be for idle, so just type idle, and then from our entry I'm going to replace into idle. So now it should be seen that's playing this idle animation, but still not doing anything. That's mainly because you don't have any animation to idle. So again, double click this, and you're going to see this output animation pose. I need to place a sequence here. To get this animation here in our asset browser, I'm going to search for idle. And here I can see the animations that are compatible with this skeleton. So I'm going to be selecting this one that maps our mesh and then place this as the output animation pose hit compile and now if you did everything right you're going to be seeing this so I explain this animation and that should be good also with this sequence player selected let's go into details and just select the loop, uh, loop animation this one over here then compile save it and should be good if you go to our third person map I can just get this BP companion and place it over here. And you're going to notice that he's already playing that animation. Next, we need to set things up so that's able to move and also follow our character afterwards. So for the next animation, I'm going to be using the walking. I think I'm going to be going directly into running so that I save a, few, a bit of time. So I'm going to right click and add a state. This one is going to be for running. And again, I'm going to from idle, I'm going to place into running. This time, I'm going to place an arrow from running into idle as well. That's mainly because I want to be able to go from idle into running and from running back to idle. So let's open this running and I'm going to just get run. Uh, I'm going to get this run forward. Yeah, this one over here, place into here. Then to our output animation pose and then loop animation. Compile, save it. You should be seeing some warnings. That's happening because you don't have created any logic to change between idle into running. So that's what I'm going to be doing now. Double click the first arrow and let's create the logic to change into running. For that, here I'm going to be creating a variable that's going to be speed. And I am going to be making this a float. I'm going to be placing this speed over here and I'm going to check if this is greater than zero. If it's greater than zero, then it should transition to the next animation. And the same thing I'm going to be doing to go back. So let's open this arrow, get our speed. This time, if this is less or equal to zero, then it should go back into idle. Compile it and everything should be good. Also, to make the interaction between our companion and our character, I'm going to be using a interface because it's a lot more optimized and you can use multiple functions with them. So not going to be so only a cast for everything that we're going to be doing with your campaign. So let's go ahead and set an interface as well. So here, right click and then let's, let's just go to blueprint and then select a blueprint interface. This one is going to be our companion interface like that. I'm not going to be create anything there yet. Uh, I'm going to be doing that in the next video, but I'm going to be setting this up. So let's go to our BP companion and then class settings. 
Over here, you are going to be seeing these implemented interfaces. I'm going to be searching for the interface that I have just created, companion interface. Place there, compile, save it. Now let's go into our third person blueprint, the third person character, and let's do the same thing over here. So let's just get our interface, implemented interface, companion, get companion interface here as well, compile, save it. So that's mainly what I want to do for this video, just to set the files already so that the next video I can focus on the companion itself. Thanks a lot for watching and I hope to see you again soon. Visit train.memetinteract.com and enroll in this course to get all source files. Use coupon code MEMETY to enroll for free.